Hey guys, welcome back to my TW2020 series here with AEW, and this is episode number four as uh, we are going to dive into uh, the third show we've had for AEW Dynamite. We are in week three of March 2021, and uh, if you didn't have a chance to catch up on the first couple of episodes, go check those out uh, before you dive into this one. That way you have an idea of what's going on with the storylines and all of that. Now, we've had a couple of, of shows thus far, and uh, we are moving towards uh, Double or Nothing, which is uh, two months exactly uh, from now. It's going to be the third week of May in 2021. So uh, go catch up on the first three episodes, and uh, you'll have an idea of where we're headed here in AEW. We start off the pre-show with uh, a matchup here between Trent and Stu Grayson. Trent gets the win. 754 with a pinfall. This gets a nice 53 rating. Uh, we'll take that, uh, you know, for what we are right now. We're not expecting to get 80s and 90s from all these types of matches. So we start off with a nice uh, 53 rating here for the pre-show match. And another pre-show match here as uh, we have uh, Chris Statlander and Hikaru Shida taking on Penelope Ford and the Bunny. Um, a victory for Statlander and Sheeta as uh, it is uh, go 725 here. Statlander gets the pin on Penelope Ford, and it looks like Sheeta uh, carry the match here. No surprise in terms of what she is able to do. And we wrap up the pre-show with uh, a match here between Joey Janela and Ortiz. Uh, Ortiz gets the win, 757. Uh, we had Santana interfere in this one uh, to help him out, so uh, the inner circle being uh, strong here on the pre-show, and here's a nice note, is that uh, Joey Janela and Ortiz have great chemistry. Uh, so that's a, an interesting one. So that's something we can always go back to uh, if we want to do that uh, with this one getting a 59. But uh, more importantly, as we said, they have great chemistry. So that is a nice little little note there now in case we, we need a show that we just want to stack and uh, we can find ways to maybe get uh, an even better rating between these two. So uh, that is the pre-show, and now we dive into the main show. And we started off with uh, a really good match here, 64, uh, as Private Party gets the win over SCU2, which is uh, going to be Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian. Uh, we look at the notes here. Uh, Mark Quinn off his game, so we could have gotten an even better rating. Uh, if Mark Quinn would have brought it a little bit more, uh, we get the tag team specialist bonus uh, for both teams. Uh, not a surprise. And, of course, I don't think this is a surprise either. Speaking of chemistry, we get another uh, good one here with a, a nice green chemistry. We like to see those instead of the red. Uh, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian have great chemistry teaming together. And uh, this gets the show off to a strong start. Uh, so this just, uh, once again, not really in terms of a storyline, not much going on here, but uh, this is the kind of match we want to open the show with, a nice, uh, fun opener uh, between two teams that can uh, bring it. And uh, no doubt we get that here with a 64 in this one. And we follow that up with a MJF promo. And as you, if you remember the past couple episodes, the storyline is that uh, MJF was seen on the first episode we had talking with Jake Roberts about an alliance with Lance Archer. And last week, uh, MJF basically said that he didn't have to explain why he wanted that alliance uh, with Lance Archer. And he's kind of following that up here and, and hinting at the fact that uh, people will find out very soon uh, what his intentions are with Lance Archer and why he wants that alliance. And uh, we get a nice, uh, you know, he goes off script. We're not going to be scripting MJF because of his abilities on the mic. And so we get a 68 out of this one. And uh, we'll see if he's right about uh, hinting at a possible uh, upcoming uh, twist here with his um, alliance with Lance Archer. And another match here that uh, goes over the 60 mark. We'll take that. Uh, 64, uh, we've been building this one up since last week. Uh, Darby Allen gets the win over Jimmy Havoc in 11.57 with the coffin drop. And uh, Darby Allen benefiting, again, from being the flavor of the month. We've seen that a couple times when he's uh, performed thus far in the series. And uh, this was a, a hardcore match. I think we made this uh, note as a, a hardcore one. We're going to look at this. 
Um, where are the road agent notes? That's what we need to go to. Yes, yeah, so we aimed this to be a hardcore match. And again, we're not going to always look at these, but for some of them, uh, we'll kind of showcase uh, what they are. Because with AEW, uh, in this particular uh, mod, you know, you have to have three different match aims that aren't just the normal ones. So, uh, you know, storytelling doesn't count. There are some other ones that, that don't count towards it. So you got to have uh, some different ones. And that's why we went with Darby Allen and Jimmy Havoc here in a hardcore match um, as we needed three different ones and this is the one that you know that we had to add to it uh, usually with AEW you can you can do the hardcore because you've got guys like this um, you know obviously you don't want to put everyone <laughs> in the hardcore match aim but uh, with these two you can do it and you know you're able to with AEW because of the, the versatility of the talent uh, you can add a lot of different you know sorts of match aims whether it's high spots um, ones like that. So uh, this is good here. We'll take this a 64 between these two, and I'm sure uh, they'll have more meetings in the future. And we go next to DDP cutting a backstage promo. Now, you're wondering why DDP has shown up here in the series for the first time. We get a 65 out of this, but um, he is in the game. He's retiring at the end of the month. So we're kind of looking back at DDP's uh, you know, history in wrestling, and this is basically just him cutting a promo, talking about his career um, in, in the in the business, and uh, we're going to have something else next week because it will be the final show before he retires at the end of the month. Uh, we'll have something else uh, going on with him next week, but this kind of hypes up his career and what he's done. As we can see in here, uh, you know, we didn't script him, and it looks like uh, Brandon Cutler was the road agent, and uh, maybe uh, he could have done a better job putting this together, but that's okay because it did get the crowd hot, and uh, that is a good thing for us as we build towards the next segment, which is not exactly, um, you know, one that we expected here in terms of a rating. Um, so we get an 18 out of this one. Now, we wanted to, to get Nyla Rose on the card because she is the women's champion, and we needed to, to have her on the card. We, we had a promo for her last week. And we're just giving her basically a squash match here against Sadie Gibbs. She goes 443. Um, and as you can tell, you know, Nyla Rose is a 49 performance. Gibbs had a 24. Clearly, you know, the crowd turned off by having a match that, that's not on the pre-show between workers they don't have any investment in. Uh, you'll see that a lot if you've got people that just don't have a high popularity rating. And Sadie Gibbs doesn't have that right now. Nyla Rose's popularity isn't, you know, huge either. Uh, in this in this particular game right now, so uh, no, probably not a shock that this is going to bring the crowd down a little bit. And maybe if we had switched it, we may have had a more you know competitive match. Maybe we throw uh, someone else in there, um, you know, like uh, I don't know, Riho or Yuka Sakazaki, someone like that uh, into the mix. But uh, that's okay. We we pretty much knew that this was not going to be a highly rated segment. Uh, we're just trying to to give Nyla Rose uh, some TV time. She is the champion. So uh, this is clearly our worst uh, segment rating, I think, of any we've had uh, to this point in the series. Uh, hopefully it doesn't bring us down uh, too much here. But uh, the champ gets a win, and uh, we will probably tweak some things uh, trying to run uh, some ideas with her uh, here moving forward. And we go from that to Luchasaurus. This is a freestyle segment that we used. Uh, last week we said that Luchasaurus was hyping up his match for this week. However... Uh, before that match can happen, we see Luchasaurus down and out in the backstage area. We see people rushing in, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, he has been completely uh, knocked down, and uh, he has no idea who attacked him, what's going on. And so uh, that offers some intrigue uh, here. This segment gets a 46. Uh, again, we used it as a freestyle uh, segment just to, to kind of base it around some of his strongest attributes. But um, so Luchasaurus is out, and he is not going to compete, which leads us to um, a replacement that uh, from Jurassic Express is going to take his place in this match, and that is Jungle Boy. So it was going to be Luchasaurus against Jack Evans. Um, now it's Jungle Boy against Jack Evans. Jungle Boy gets the win. Uh, this one only gets a 38, and once again, just like we had with Nyla Rose and Sadie Gibbs, it looks like uh, this was not exactly a great idea. Um, we see that the crowd turned off again by, by having a match outside the pre-show between people they're not invested in. Um, and then we use this as a high spot. So we did put this as the road agent notes um, using a high spot match here. And it looks like because the crowd had kind of been a little bit brought down, 
Um, you know, this wasn't exactly what they were looking for. Let's put it that way. So <laughs> these two still had a, a nice performance uh, overall if you look at their performance ratings. But because it only gets a 38 and we had these two red notes here, uh, it drags the rating down to that there. And so um, once again, not exactly, you know, <laughs> this isn't everything that the people have wanted. We've had two pretty good shows uh, to this point without having a lot of these, you know, red notes in there. Uh, but uh, we have two of them on this card thus far. But Jungle Boy replaces Luchasaurus, uh, who was attacked. And so uh, now that's going to move us forward into this, where another freestyle segment after the match, we see Lance Archer come out and completely destroy Jungle Boy. Um, and so that gets a 48, which we were not expecting, you know, a, a huge number out of this one. But this does advance the storyline. So Lance Archer destroys Jungle Boy. And, of course, that is leading to uh, curiosity as to whether Archer was the one that attacked Luchasaurus. And uh, we will find out eventually if that is the case. But uh, for now, uh, Lance Archer making his present felt by attacking Jungle Boy. And what do you know, MJF, nowhere to be found uh, in this. So we'll see you know, what the follow-up is with this particular angle. And the next one, we go to Les Sex Gods uh, giving their promo here. Jericho and Sammy Guevara um, gets a 71. That is nice. Sammy went off script here, and and he's one that we've seen since we started this series. Uh, sometimes Sammy doesn't. He gets a, a positive for going off script. Sometimes he gets a negative. This was an example of him getting a negative uh, for going off, off script. Jericho benefits from having the hot catchphrase. And, uh, of course, Jericho without a script, uh, you know what you're getting. You're going to get uh, perfection. And so this gets a 71 as they cut a promo, uh, which is going to lead us into our next segment, which is Sammy Guevara getting a victory against Scorpio Sky in 936, a 65-match rating here. Uh, this gets the crowd hotter, so we're starting to heat them back up after uh, some of those uh, struggling segments. Uh, Sammy gets a performance of 71. Uh, he is the star, and if you watched uh, episode number three, at the end we saw Brandon Cutler's email about Sammy Guevara to strap a rocket to him. And uh, you'll probably note that we're probably going to strap a rocket to Sammy at some point. And uh, he is a star, and uh, we're showing that here uh, with him. So we get a 65. He gets a victory over Scorpio Sky. And then we go to a massive brawl, which uh, involves Jericho and Sammy and best friends. We've got Trent, Chuck Taylor, and Orange Cassidy all out here. This segment gets a 47. This builds off of uh, the the feud we've had as Jericho beat Chuck Taylor last week, and then he was basically been calling out Orange Cassidy. And uh, we have noted that they are going to have a match at some point. We don't know exactly when that's going to be, but Jericho and Orange Cassidy are going to face off. So that's caused the feud here. And so after the match, we get everyone brawling with each other. Um, and as we can tell, we get the lack of anything interesting happening in this segment was a problem. Now, that's likely based around um, how we set it here in terms of what the particular attribute that we were focusing on for all of these guys. Um, you know, obviously with Jericho and Sammy, we were probably focusing on entertainment and that type of thing. But I'm not sure exactly what I set for the other ones, and that may have caused us to get this uh, note here for this one and, and certainly drag the rating down. Um, but uh, Jericho, fantastic. Orange Cassidy, fantastic. That's why we're building towards an eventual match between these two uh, because uh, it's going to blow the roof off the place. And uh, so Orange Cassidy gives us a nice benefit here. We, we would have loved to have a much higher rating on this, and uh, that's probably one of those where, you know, still getting used to, to the game and trying to uh, figure out the best attributes to focus on when you have these freestyle segments where you have to basically set something for all five of these guys and base it, you know, try to base it around their, their best attributes. So uh, clearly I didn't do that on this one, and so uh, it only gets a 47. But uh, still, it furthers the feud between these two, so it uh, should be a fun one. And we go from that to what has been uh, the the main storyline here, and uh, we're doing it at this point because uh, we know what our huge main event's going to be with Kenny Omega and Pentagon Jr., uh, but uh, this is where we find out that the person that John Moxley issued Open Challenge a couple weeks ago, and then uh, there was someone, a dark, shadowy figure that was stalking him, basically, um, and um, it turns out that uh, it's Brody Lee because uh, he Moxley goes to the ring to call out this person, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we see Brody Lee attack, uh, completely destroys Moxley, and uh, that obviously pushes 
this storyline that we're going to have uh, between these two, uh, once again, we get a note here that the lack of anything interesting happening in this segment was a problem. So we get that in back-to-back -back segments. It's not ideal. Um, that's not what we were looking for. So this has, uh, this has been a show that uh, has been, had some ups and downs when it comes to some of these uh, but uh, again, we may have just based this on, and this was a regular segment, uh, so it, it may have just based around the fact that uh, one of these uh, attributes or overness or something uh, was not high enough, and uh, that caused us uh, to get this note uh, in this one in particular. So, And next up, that leads us to a really good match here. 79 is uh, Cody defeats Kip Sabian, and all it goes 11-33. Gets crossroads for the win. Uh, what a, this is quite a Cody with an 86 performance. Uh, that's a hell of a job from him. Uh, Kip Sabian gets a 48, but uh, we're building Kip up a bit, uh, trying to to figure out some of the things uh, that he's going to be able to do. Uh, Cody, ground 12, public support. That's nice, but uh, 79 here, uh, fantastic between these two, and that is basically to build us up to the post-match promo involving Cody, and uh, it's basically him uh, calling out Pac, and uh, we've seen the feud between these two. Pack attack Cody uh, on the first episode we had in the series and uh, basically said that he wants the TNT title and uh, Cody is responding to him. And that leads us to a promo uh, between or having uh, Hangman Page here with the 72 uh, hot catchphrase, flavor of the month, uh, all builds into a nice 72 rating. Uh, he's hyping up uh, his friend Kenny Omega, who's in the main event, and uh, Hangman just doing his thing uh, as they continue to get ready for their big tag team title match at Double or Nothing in a couple months against the Lucha Brothers. Um, so we will see uh, how that's going to play out, but uh, Hangman with a promo here. And that leads us to the main event, and we're hoping for big things from this one, so let's see uh, how it played out. And we get a 78, which is uh, really good here uh, with Kenny Omega getting the win over Pentagon Jr., 15-12. Uh, he gets the victory, and Kenny benefits from being in amazing form. No surprise. Gets the crowd buzzing. Uh, Kenny with an 89, Pentagon with a 63. Uh, so this is a nice main event. This is what we wanted, uh, a really a good showcase for these two and, and furthers the hype in the uh, the tag team title match uh, at Double or Nothing. So uh, a nice main event here. Surely that's going to give us uh, a nice rating here overall. So let's see. And so we finished and get an overall rating of 72. That's good. Uh, I think, let's see, our first show we had a 72. Last week's show we had a 73. So this week's show is 72. We've been very consistent, uh, despite the fact in this show we did have some of these reds here uh, with the Nyla Rose stuff, and, and some of the segments just weren't as good as we need them to be uh, in terms of looking at the Jungle Boy Jack Evans match and ones like that. But we benefit from having a strong finish to the show with all of these here and, and having – uh, you know, the match between Kenny and Pentagon Jr., which I just realized was, you know, still got a point less than Cody and Kip Sabian. So that's something. Uh, but uh, having those two matches on the card, having a great main event, that helps us. We're still getting the red uh, because of the our, our, you know, our live event experience and production values are not as high as WWE or NXT. Uh, so we've still got a little ways to go to catch them, but that's okay for right now. Uh, 72, we will take that. And so that leads us to, uh, you know, some momentum still here as we go into uh, the next week. And uh, before we wrap up, we will catch up on some email and look at some interesting notes uh, that are going to affect the company here. And let's dive into the email, as we can see here. Um, AW Dynamite uh, gets, uh, look, the great again, a lot of praise. And let's quickly look at NXT as our competition before we dive into the email. Uh, so NXT gets a 64, and uh, they had quite a main event here in a four-way uh, between uh, these four with Finn Balor, uh, Tommaso Ciampa, Kushida, and Karrion Cross with a 76. In the main event, but uh, once again, we top NXT with a better rating overall, uh, so that's worth noting. We've beaten them three straight weeks in the overall rating. I uh, don't know if that's going to be enough uh, for us to catch them that quickly, but uh, at least we see that uh, we have done a good job uh, in terms of producing better shows from an overall rating standpoint. Now let's look at the email. I've kept these as I always do. I keep the most interesting ones here throughout the week. Uh, we can go through them. Looks like Aubrey Edwards uh, getting some more work uh, here as uh, she is joining Chikara on a handshake deal. So uh, that's worth noting. 
Uh, our dynamite figures, we get a 1.9 or 1.29 on TV, which, uh, look at this, get 974,000 viewers. That's good. A week ago, we had 1.28 rating, and I think the first week we had a 1.14. So uh, we've actually gone up pretty considerably. So we're almost close to that million uh, range here, and we'll see if we can get that maybe uh, next week with a big main event, uh, which we will uh, hype up uh, for next week. Bryce Remsburg, another referee, uh, getting an offer. He's getting one uh, from PWG. We'll see if that goes anywhere. Um, AW Dark got a not quite that one million range, uh, 2,388 viewers. Um, so not a lot to take away from that. Uh, looks like here I kept this one. Great uh, chemistry between Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen in a house show monitor. So uh, that's worth noting because they are the future of AEW. And uh, clearly, uh, this gives me more incentive uh, to pair these two together, given the fact that they have great chemistry. We had a house show uh, brought in almost 5,615 fans in the Mid-South. Uh, Aubrey Evertoffer, as we've seen, she's already uh, joined Chikara. And Art Anderson has retired uh, or he will be retiring in one month. So this we got this on week two, March 2021. So Arn Anderson is going to be retiring, and uh, that is worth noting because we will talk about uh, who we're going to hire to replace him in the next episode. But uh, we have made a hire, and uh, we're going to have someone uh, helping us out, hopefully to replace Arn Anderson because he's been uh, quite a road agent for us. Uh, he does a lot of the road agent stuff. Uh, I pick him just because uh, usually the ones he's in, uh, we do really good. So uh, that's actually going to be a pretty you know, decent loss for us uh, when you consider what he could do and uh, you know, as a, a manager possibility and all those things. So Arn Anderson retiring. Uh, so that is a, a knock for AEW, but uh, we'll see if we can find someone uh, to replace some of the things they did, and we think we have, and we'll discuss that on the next episode and uh, another house show here uh, for this one. Uh, so there's just another note on that. So uh, that clears out the main and uh, quickly we'll look at AEW Dark before we wrap up. Uh, I only got a 46, and uh, we struggled a little bit with AEW Dark a couple of recent episodes uh, as uh, the main event was Scorpio Sky defeating Shima at 46, and we had a DDP promo again. We're hyping up his retirement. Um, but, uh, you know, not a ton to take away from uh, AEW Dark because we just had a bunch of different people in action. Cheetah gets a win. Uh, Private Party gets a win. Uh, we had Butcher and the Blade winning on the pre-show. Big Swole gets a win. Um, so uh, lots of different stuff like that. So AEW Dark continues to be uh, a show that we're just trying to to get some uh, wins for some of these people. And uh, we'll see if we can find anything for them to do. Or bigger storylines for them uh, on AEW Dynamite. But uh, that'll wrap up uh, this episode, guys. And uh, thanks, as always, uh, for watching. I continue to enjoy uh, watching all of your games. It's been so fun because... Uh, the game is a lot of fun. I know there was a lot of uh, different thoughts on it uh, and the trial and everything with the interface, but uh, I think it's uh, really fun to play right now. Still some things that will continue to be tweaked, but uh, having fun with the AEW game. And as I've said, going to be starting a new game here uh, on the channel. So uh, if you want to check that out, uh, maybe you're not the biggest AEW fan. You want to see some WWE, uh, some of the old school type of games. Uh, I'm going to have some of those coming on the channel. So be sure to subscribe to that. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be back next, uh, next time with another episode of AEW Dynamite.